It's official, Nintendo 3DS launch period has begun because the 3DS is doomed. According to MSNBC and several other sources, which are now uh, starting the seasonal flood of Nintendo is doomed articles are starting to trickle out onto the internet. Uh, one called, uh, the two I'm going to discuss here, one is called Five Reasons Why Nintendo is Doomed. Nintendo's 3DS doesn't stand a chance, which is from MSNBC, which coincidentally or not is, if you don't know, stands for the Microsoft National Broadcast Company. Wonder if that has anything to do with it. Probably not, but it's, it's interesting. And Gadget Review has another has an article called Five Reasons Why Nintendo Lacks Depth for 3DS. Interesting enough, both of these have five reasons. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if there's some sort of conspiracy. I don't think there is. I just think people are making the same mistakes that they make every time. It seems like whenever you see a bunch of Nintendo is doomed articles that like really take themselves seriously and list all these reasons why Nintendo does not stand a chance of surviving this coming generation, it usually means Nintendo is on the verge of releasing their most successful platform in history. As we've seen, both with all the, the articles that were coming out when Nintendo first announced the, the DS and when the Nintendo first announced the Wii. I remember, and specifically, uh, GameSpot, as their 2006 April Fool's joke, released an extensive article uh, in which analysts predict analysts made up analysts predicted that the that the Wii would be a, the not only the most would be Nintendo's most successful system and would be the dominant system of the current generation. And you know, at the time, that was you could at least that was an April Fool's joke, is how seriously people took the Wii at the time, and still do now for some reason, despite it like taking over the world and all that. So and. I specifically, I'm, I'm saying specifically, I have to cut down on those buzzwords, but when it comes to the DS, I remember in EGM, when in, E3, in their E3 2004 coverage, they pretty much, they compared the, the DS and the PSP, which both made their debut at E3 that year, and it wasn't overtly biased, but you could tell they're pretty much counting the Nintendo DS out, and for basically... Uh, preparing, saying that the, the PSP was going to take over Nintendo's portable dominance in the same way that the PlayStation uh, eclipsed the Nintendo 64 and now the PS2 eclipsed the GameCube in terms of market share. And, you know, going into that generation, the Game Boy line had nearly 100% market share of the portable game market, and that can't go up. But, you know, the PSP really, they sort of they didn't take away from Nintendo's pie. They sort of made their own pie. They sort of they added to the market. They didn't really take away from Nintendo so much as uh, Sony and a lot of the gaming universe expected. And I remember also a lot of people, even in E3 04, were expecting the PSP's price to be maybe three hundred, even four or five hundred dollars, which probably has a lot to do with the fact that no one has seen performance that good on a on a portable system at that point. And as maybe September, when the PSP's U.S. launch price was announced to be, I think, two hundred fifty dollars, which was a hundred dollars only, only a hundred dollars more than the DS. People expect like a two hundred, three hundred dollar gap. When the PSP was announced to be only a hundred dollars more expensive than the DS, there was a cartoon in EGM which literally depicted the two hundred fifty dollar price point for the PSP as an atom bomb being dropped on Nintendo's headquarters. There was there was it was common knowledge that the DS was going to be totally wiped out by the PSP and here we are now with the PSP being successful in its own right but in terms of crushing the the DS and making it irrelevant and that that's all uh, sort of long people it seems like everyone forgot that people actually thought that now like looking back it's like oh obviously Nintendo was going to win of course they own the portable game space uh, now once again it's there's some legitimate uncertainty on the surface, not if you look into it or know the history or have been following games for further than the past year or so. That the PS, the iOS platform, which includes you know the iPad, the iPod, and the iPod Touches, 
starting to be be taken more and more seriously as a game platform, but it's not going to make the 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 3DS irrelevant. And once again, we have uh, a lot of articles coming out, just like we saw for the Wii, just like we saw for the Nintendo DS, saying, "Oh, you know, Nintendo's doomed. They're making, they're coming out with this silly, uh, gimmicky, underpowered system with features nobody wants and." that no one's going to care about because the mature system, the grown-up, the hipper, more technologically advanced system, then the PSP, now the iOS systems. And uh, people are saying the same thing about the PSP2 already just because, you know, oh, it's going to be as powerful as the PS3. So, but whatever. But here I've got my uh, uh, my 3DS pre-order from Nintendo World, so uh, you can see where my bets are placed. Now... Uh, now I'm going to go, now that I can have the time to do this, I'm going to go point by point on these, I mean, I guess all ten reasons, some of them are repeating, between these and the MSNBC and the Gadget Review article and uh, refute these one at a time. Let's see. The, the, the 3DS, Nintendo's best hope at regaining its now fading relevance. Now fading relevance. I remember when, uh, who was it, Cammy Dunaway stepped down, some uh, iPod, iTunes site, some I iPhone fan site was saying that the unstoppable freight train force of the uh, I iOS platforms had forced Cammy Dunaway out of office. Nintendo was feeling the burn, and that's not what's going on. Uh, as Anyway... Nintendo's best hope of regaining its now fading relevance is finally coming. Okay, let me quote. Let me go over five reasons why I believe the 3DS is going to fizzle rather than sizzle in two months. Number one, it's too late. I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to go, go uh, just take the bold... I've read the, art, the entire article, but I'm just going to take the bolded points and just refute them one at a time. Number one, it's too late. No, it isn't. Nintendo's getting to the market exactly when they said they'd be. I think within a week, they said that it would be out in March 20, by March 2011, and the 3DS in, in, the, the, in North America is launching within a week of when they first announced the, I think within a week or two of when they originally announced the 3DS. They're getting there exactly when they said they would be which Sony did not with the original PSP. And another thing I'd like to, to point out, in terms of people counting out the DS, oh, it's just a gimmick system, it's, back when G4 was a video game channel and had lots of good programming, there were, on G4TV.com, there was a argue, battle between whoever it was that went on stage at E305 and uh, previewed Nintendogs with Mr. Miyamoto. That lady and whoever that I think, was it Jeff Keighley? I don't know. Whoever was on there who would go on rants about how, like, oh, Nintendo is going to be making be a third-party developer by 2008 because they keep, they keep saying they're going to be for adults, but then they go around making Donkey Dongo bongos for their... as though adults don't play rhythm games. Uh, that was for Guitar Hero. But anyway, they were having an argument over which, which system would dominate, and... Uh, the lady was saying that the DS, you know, it, you know, it's, it sold the most systems at the time. This is maybe like summer '05. This came out, and the, then the other guy was saying, no, that's not. You can't judge it on that because the, the DS came out like months first. Well, no one said, no one gave the the GameCube or the Xbox a handicap when the PS2 came out a year earlier. So I mean, when they when when you get there first. That doesn't. That's not an unfair advantage. That's you know playing you playing it smart and getting there when you say you're going to be. So Nintendo's getting there exactly when they lined out that they'd be getting there. So it's too late. Uh, that doesn't. Uh, that doesn't. Uh, I don't take that seriously. No, point number two on the MSNBC article. No one cares about 3D outside of the multiplex. Television manufacturers put pretty. Wa okay. Uh, 3D TV, it's just getting into the market. I mean, when HD came out, it wasn't like, boom, everyone is HD, you know? It was a really, it was really expensive to be an early adopter, and if you were one of those early HD TV adopters, there wasn't a lot of content out then, and only now, 
now is there going to be there are lots and lots of HD content, and the HD TVs are finally coming down in price. So you really can't judge the the receptance to 3D based purely on the first generation of bleeding edge HD 3D HD TVs that display in 3D that came out you know in the last the last year or so. And okay, I'm going to go into that that a bit more about receptiveness to 3D and when I get to the other article. Number three, toddlers are out. Unfortunately, the 3DS maybe you know they're say, he's saying that you know oh, it would be perfect for little kids, but it's maybe a health risk. They're advising seven and unders not to buy it. Uh, th that's a silly point to make. I, I guess this guy didn't realize that a, a great ex a great deal of the 3DS's unprecedented success has been due to Nintendo. Even the Game Boy Advance, like what a third in 2004, like a third of their user base were 18 and up. Even with the Game Boy Advance. Them saying that because seven and under, uh, six and unders aren't supposed to be playing the 3DS according to Nintendo, that they're going to lose this huge amount of market share, not realizing that Nintendo from the beginning tar geared the DS to expand into teens and adult teens and adulthood, starting with you know they packed Metroid Prime Hunters as you know the Metroid Prime Hunters the tech demo of Metroid Prime Hunters as their launch pack in. And you know they were, they what did an advertising campaign with uh, the Wild Boys on MTV. There's Nintendo started skewing older from the very beginning up into you know 30 plus with the the Brain Age and and uh, those types of games. Number four, the price is too high. Maybe if you're in Europe, that that must hurt to have to pay like the equivalent of what 300, 350 dollars they have to pay there. Uh, 250, uh, that's a perfectly reasonable price unless you literally think Nintendo owes you a free or extremely low cost system. If you think Nintendo owes you to take a hit so you can afford their system for super cheap. Five. Now this is a good one. Apple owns Nintendo. They're basically just saying that Nintendo has like Apple sold nearly 43 million devices running Apple's iOS in the past quarter. Uh, yeah, how many of those are how many people are playing game are like I'm gonna be a gamer and how how many people are buying this as their gaming device? They might it's sort of a side dish. I mean even it's not I there's there's a comparison to be made. When Nintendo came out with the DSI, I could see that they were preparing to they were preparing for this battle that's taking place projected to take place between iOS and Nintendo's portable. Nintendo's preparing for that battle and once I once as soon as I considered in my mind that should I get an i a new iPod this is before, you know before the iPod Touch was even blew up like it is now, iPod versus the uh, Nintendo DSi as that could play music too. As soon as I even thought that comparison was relevant, that that battle's already started. And Nintendo's prepared for that with the DSi, and and uh, so really, uh, Ninten Apple owns Nintendo. That's laughable. We can't write off, this is a quote, we can't write off Nintendo entirely. It still has a major advantage over Microsoft, over Microsoft and Sony and its biggest games proprietary franchises. Sure, that didn't help Sega in its waning days. Yeah, or whatever. Okay. So now on to the much more sensationalistic article on Gadget Review. Five reasons why the Nintendo, why, five reasons why Nintendo lacks depth, the 3DS. Number one, nobody wants 3D. Nobody wants 3D. Just Nintendo's own, uh, just their their own. The reaction at E3 proves that that's that's rubbish from the outset. And if you're going to talk about no one wants 3D in terms of just uh, the sales of HD TVs, which is exact in terms of 3D TVs, which is exactly what this this author is doing here. Uh, that's that's not. A good comparison. The 3D, the 3D on the 3DS is kind of an X factor. We don't really. It's not nothing like it. People haven't been exposed to 3D in the way that that the 3DS provides. So we really. So to say to ju just judge, oh, no one wants 3D based on these polling that was done on the sales of of H of HD TVs that display in 3D with you know with special glasses is pretty. Uh, pretty unwise. Two, software, it's serious business. I know kids in elementary, quote, I know kids in elementary school have more, more iPhone apps than me, 
and Nintendo is putting in a... I guess Nintendo's new model is useless hardware and junk software. That nah, just makes him sound like a fanboy. Uh, battery woes. Now, and mind you, I, I do not own a Nintendo uh, DSi. I haven't really had any experience with the downloadable games. I, I've heard there's some shovelware on the, the DSi download system, but I've heard that a lot of Nintendo's offerings, have, even if they're sort of overlooked, even if they haven't pushed them the way one might expect, that they have basically demonstrated that Nintendo is willing to put out a a, lot, a selection, develop and put out a selection of downloadable, low-cost, high-quality titles. That's specifically, when I say low-cost, high-quality, I'm quoting someone from GameSpot or something, I think, so uh, just for full disclosure there. Uh, number three, battery woes. Nintendo, you know, talking about the battery life. The 3DS couldn't last a flight from LA to New York. Now, I haven't flown from LA to New York before, but uh, like I said before, the um, in terms of at no point, even like when I was in when hi, in high school and I was I rode I rode what the bus to school, the bus to my my tech center, the bus back to the high school, and then the bus back to home. So that's four bus rides a day. Plus my I had a lot of you know free time during the day. Like or. Just at no point, as much as I play DSi, my Nintendo DS Lite, excuse me, I've never, very seldom have I drained the batteries on them. When I drain the battery life, it's, like I charge it maybe, what, once every couple of weeks, and I play, you know, I play it a lot. I'm not a whole, I don't play it a whole lot, so really plugging in, dropping my DS, my 3DS in the dock every day when I get home in the evening, it's not going to be a big deal to me. Uh, and someone, and I think in, maybe in the other article, we're saying that the battery, like, oh, five hours battery life, that's just what the Game Gear got, and the, and the battery life on the Game Gear, you know, is what killed it. I had a Game Gear back then. That's the system, I, that was my first system. I wish the battery life on the Game Gear lasted five hours with, what, six double A's, eight double A's it took. So I, what, five to eight, it's gonna be, that's enough battery life for me. And I know, you know, your mileage, you know, your individual experience and how you're going to be using it, it's going to vary. But based on what I'm hearing, uh, the battery life sounds like it's going to be adequate to me. Uh, number four, sharing is overrated. There's, that's just talking about how, you know, people around you aren't going to, be, if you're look, looking at it, aren't going to see the 3D effects, it's just going to look blurry to them. And, and that's, that's sort of an interesting point, because that's sort of what Nintendo was saying about the Nintendo DSi XL, was that the point, part of the point was to make it, playing the system more social, so that, you know, you can have people sitting around you and look at the game with you and enjoy it with you. So, uh, that's an interesting point. I uh, don't think it's going to make or break the system. Uh, two, number five, too little, too late. Once again, sort of, you know, saying that... that this one, they're specifically commenting on Nintendo's uh, technical specs here. And I quote, uh, Nintendo comes in, quote, Nintendo comes in like a hipster trying to be retro. Every part of the 3DS is old except for the 3D tech and the processing power, which remains a mystery. Three VGA cameras, a resistive touchscreen, 400x420 and 320x420 resolution displays. If I were to describe such a device to anyone today and not say it was from Nintendo, they'd ask who'd make such crap. Well, whatever, you know, the, the DS, the original DS when it came out was underpowered compared to what could have been done as proven by the, you know, the PSP which came out in the same time period. You know, people like, oh, you know, why doesn't it have an optical display? Why doesn't it have a... Uh, you know, CD quality sound, why doesn't it have, you know, this and that, and once again, Nintendo sort of proved that, you know, the, t the dual screen and the touch screen, though they were called gimmicks at the time, and are still called gimmicks, referred to as gimmicks, proved that, you know, how you use your technology is much, uh, a million times more important than having the best available and most powerful technology. So, uh... Pretty much, uh, I expect any other points, any future Nintendo's Doomed articles are sure to make are going to probably make references like, oh, you know, what, the adults won't want to play, the adults will want to play on a phone and not a game system because only little kids will play on a game system even though 
pretty much the entire previous uh, portal generation proved that that was completely incorrect. And, you know, per, the terminal, there's going to be a certain terminally hip crowd that's not, you know, would rather die than be seen playing on a system put out by Nintendo, but it's pretty minimal. I mean, you know, like I said, people are going to keep, they keep making the same assumptions and mistakes. And I let it, when I'm, I should have saved a lot of those articles because a lot of them are just old just because they're obsolete and the links are dead. This time I'm saving these articles so that when the 3DS, you know, is, you know, when Nintendo has their sizzle reel at E3 2000, what, 11 and 12 about how the 3DS is taking over the universe, that uh, these links aren't dead and we could actually uh, say like, yeah, remember when you said that the 3DS was going to be a huge disaster? Yeah, well, that's not how it turned out. So, uh, the, the PSP 2 news is coming out soon. That's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, I uh, did own a PSP, and it was a nice system. I ended up selling it because the games were really slow coming at first. And I had to choose, you know, I ended up selecting my DS and selling that to for some college money. But uh, the three, the PSP2 is going to be a very interesting system, especially if it's as powerful as people claim. And they're talking about a touchscreen on the back of the system. That's going to be very, very interesting. This video is probably long enough as it is, so I'll make another video about that later. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, maybe I'll see you uh, at Nintendo World on uh, launch day for the 3DS.